The most powerful man of the most powerful country would certainly require transport and secrecy of the highest order? And how is that provided? That is what we will uncover today as we shed light on how each president had their own technique for avoiding public scrutiny. These stories not only shed light on the security measures that surround the world's leaders, but they also provide a glimpse into the more intimate human side of these legendary personalities. Today, we reveal the mysterious modes of transportation of six former U.S. presidents. You will be fascinated by their impressive collections. Prepare to enter the world of presidential travel, where secrecy and discretion are essential. Number 6. Donald Trump Donald Trump has his own fleet of airplanes and helicopters, a magnificent collection for smooth travel. The custom Boeing 757, a rigorously guarded private plane, is the center of attention in Trump's aviation ensemble. This aircraft, which operates as a secret aerial sanctuary, and is powered by Rolls-Royce engines. One of the things very important to me on the Boeing 757 was the Rolls-Royce engines. They're special, they're really popular. Can cover up to 3,000 miles in eight hours. Aside from its functionality, it features Italian leather seats adorned with the Trump family insignia, luxurious 24 karat gold accents, two private guest rooms, three bathrooms, a dining and conference space, and an entertainment system rivaling a personal cinema theater. While this jet has traveled the world, its voyages have been distinguished by an air of mystery, leaving tiny but profound imprints wherever it goes. However, once the president assumed the presidency, he could no longer use this because he only traveled by Air Force. The Trump Organization's Aviation Division also operates a fleet of Sikorsky S-76 helicopters as an exclusive aerial sanctuary for crucial executives. These helicopters, filled with luxury comfort, refreshment centers, and live map displays, smoothly traverse the skies, proudly displaying the Trump aviation trademark. The Trump Cessna Citation is another option. This aircraft is known for its speed as a rocket in the sky, reaching speeds of up to Mach 92 and heights of 50,000 feet. It is one of the quickest in the world and seats nine passengers in sumptuous cabins. The Trump crest is boldly displayed on its facade, adding an extra dimension of boldness to this marvel. This jet travels with speed and can easily maneuver into smaller airports. Trump's aviation section made post-presidency travel stress-free for former President Trump. His private fleet ensured smooth, secret travel. President Trump can easily fly across the air, unfettered by the limitations of secrecy. Then there's Donald Trump's vehicle collection, which exudes richness and luxury. One of his cherished assets is a $500,000 Mercedes-Benz McLaren with a strong engine and rear-wheel drive. The former President's Act, on the other hand, prohibits Trump from driving these extravagant cars on public highways, assuring his safety and preventing security problems. The Act, which provides previous presidents with lifelong Secret Service protection, prevents Trump from driving or flying alone. Trump's Rolls-Royce collection, which includes classics such as the 1956 Silver Cloud and the Phantom, epitomizes elegance and wealth. With its smooth ride and pothole spotting camera, the Phantom provides a driving sensation similar to floating on a fluffy cloud. Despite their opulence, these expensive automobiles are only seen from afar, as legal restrictions prevent Trump from driving them. Trump formerly owned a 1997 Lamborghini Diablo, a legendary Italian supercar with a distinctive exterior badge carrying his name. While the car has passed through several hands since Trump's ownership, it has received particular maintenance to increase its Trump-related worth. Due to the legal restrictions imposed on previous presidents, Trump can only reminisce about the exhilaration of driving his Lamborghini. Another car in his collection is the Tesla Roadster, a $200,000 all-electric supercar that illustrates Trump's interest in cutting-edge technology. Despite the excitement, Trump will not be able to get behind the wheel and experience the breakthroughs in electric supercars. Trump's partnership with Cadillac covers many models, including a special edition called the Trump Executive Series. His Cadillac Alante, a company gift painted in his favorite color, gold, joins his collection of luxury vehicles. Trump owns a 24K Gold Chopper too, as a one-of-a-kind addition to his collection. 
This custom gold motorcycle, engraved with Trump's name, is one of the country's most luxurious and noticeable motorcycles. These cars, once symbols of personal freedom, now serve as stationary displays of opulence, emphasizing former president's prioritization of safety and security. Number five, Barack Obama. The duties of the president were reflected in Barack Obama's substantial travel during his term. Obama covered a lot of ground during his two terms, from foreign diplomacy to home interactions, solidifying his standing as a global leader. When it came to the president's official vehicle, however, nothing tops the beast. This limousine, often known as Cadillac One, is a mobile fortress. The beast, which is used even now, weighs between 7,000 to 9,000 kilograms. It has bulletproof windows, pumps, action shotguns, tear gas cannons, blood bags for defense, GPS tracking, and a torso armored with five inch thick military grade protection. But that's not all. This vehicle's night vision cameras, tear gas grenade launchers, and capacity to drive on a flat tire make it a true security and technology marvel. The beast is a symbol of the president's safety, displaying the tremendous steps used to guarantee the commander-in-chief travels in complete secrecy and protection. If you ever drive, I cannot drive. I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm able to drive. Barack Obama's car collection, on the other hand, demonstrates a taste for both utility and power. He arrived in a Ford Escape Hybrid, an SUV with a hybrid powertrain in 2008. With pricing starting at $29,000, this hybrid marvel displayed Obama's eco-friendly side. Moving back in time, we find the Chrysler in Obama's car lineup too. The base price for this vehicle was $33,000. Furthermore, the oldest treasure in Obama's collection was the Jeep Grand Cherokee, a dependable SUV with adequate horsepower and torque. But, uh, but my first brand new car with a brand new car smell was a Jeep Cherokee. And I thought I was a bad man once I was in that car. This Jeep was a dependable option that combined usability with off-road prowess. However, the obligations of the president, as well as security requirements, hampered his capacity to enjoy these vehicles, transforming them into opulent artifacts rather than functional sources of transportation. During the presidency, Barack was seen frequently traveling. And when it comes to air travel, the iconic symbol of presidential travel, Air Force One, stands tall. President Barack Obama's Air Force One, a special Boeing 747, acted as a flying oval office with an authoritative air. It is as tall as a six-story building and has 4,000 square feet of interior space. Inside, the three-level aircraft had a conference room, dining room, the president's private rooms, offices for top personnel, and even a medical operating room with a doctor on board for every voyage. Air Force One was outfitted with multi-frequency radios to ensure smooth air-to-air -air and air-to-ground communication. The press room, two food preparation galleys capable of preparing a hundred meals, and extensive security measures all contribute to the intricate architecture of the aircraft. President Obama's Air Force One was the most expensive to operate, costing $200,000 per hour, underlining the importance placed on ensuring the president's secure and discreet air travel. As shown in photographs from Austin, New Mexico, Houston, Beijing, Afghanistan, and other locales, security details included rigorous processes throughout departure and arrival. The airplane served as a mobile workspace for the president, where he held meetings, conferred with aides, and handled foreign contacts. President Obama's flights on board Air Force One were distinguished by a blend of practicality, security, and presidential dignity. Whether seeing tornado damage in Oklahoma, celebrating anniversaries, or completing official business, it was nothing short of magnificent for the Obama family to have their first flight without Air Force One. Michelle Obama was photographed boarding Sir Richard Branson's Falcon 900 EX jet in Palm Springs, California, on her way to a Necker Island resort in the British Virgin Islands. For President Obama, you know what he's doing? <laughs> Vacationing in the British Virgin Islands, accepting Sir Richard Branson's tropical physical challenge. Although Obama was not observed boarding the jet, you can bet he did not take a commercial flight to the Caribbean. 
Because all presidents and their spouses are entitled to lifetime Secret Service protection, commercial flights are out of the question. Furthermore, given the potential for pandemonium produced by a president's appearance in a public airport terminal, it's probably not the best idea. As a result, private planes have emerged as the favored option for secure and discreet post-presidential air travel. Number 4. George Bush On September 11, 2001, amid the chaos, President George Bush's security was paramount. Rushed to Sarasota International Airport, the presidential convoy, fortified by Air Force One, ensured swift departure. With remarkable efficiency, President Bush boarded the plane, escaping the turmoil below. Air Force One became a refuge, shielding the president and the nation from the unfolding crisis. As it soared into the sky, the airport, gripped by fear and uncertainty, turned away passengers oblivious to the unfolding tragedy. In the protective confines of Air Force One, President Bush remained airborne until the safety of Washington, D.C. was assured. Post 9-11, George Bush embarked on perilous journeys worldwide, not as routine travel, but as high-stakes missions to the front lines of the War on Terror. Boarding Air Force One, the iconic blue and white plane wasn't merely travel. It was a quest to uplift and commend brave troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Touching down on foreign soil, security soared. Every step calculated, every move fortified. President Bush, bridging the gap between commander-in-chief and frontline soldiers, met them in harsh deserts and rugged mountains. Air Force One became not just a means of transportation, but a symbol of American power on the very ground where the war on terror unfolded. Post-presidency George Bush has evolved into a global force for good through George Bush Institute's Human Freedom Initiative. His extensive travels, more than a journey, become a mission dedicated to humanitarian causes worldwide. From Africa to Asia, each flight contributes to addressing crucial issues like healthcare and education. Beyond attending events, President Bush's trips, whether to a Zambian health clinic or Afghan entrepreneurs, amplify the voices of those in need. This unique blend of diplomacy and genuine concern spans the air and ground, turning frequent flyer miles into a tool for positive change. However, all his post-presidency travels are on private planes, ensuring high-level security and discretion. Shielded by robust security measures, his air travel maintains a confidential and controlled environment. These private flights offer the former president flexibility and efficiency in his global endeavors. The use of private planes not only accommodates his demanding schedule, but also safeguards his safety, a paramount concern given his status. This approach allows President Bush to navigate the world with agility, maintaining a balance between security imperatives and the pursuit of impactful worldwide initiatives. However, an unfortunate event occurred when his plane was forced to make an emergency landing. The plane was flying from Philadelphia to Dallas when it was diverted to Louisville, Kentucky, due to a reported smell of smoke in the cockpit. Fortunately, no one was injured. According to Bush's spokesperson, Freddie Ford, the plane continued its journey to Dallas after a brief stop. Despite the incident, Ford, who was on board, assured passengers that he saw and smelled no smoke. The former president's plane, the Gulfstream 4, eventually landed safely at Dallas Love Field. Bush, the former president, was returning from a youth education event in Philadelphia. Now we know how he flies, but how does he maneuver the roads? George Bush spends his post-presidency on the Prairie Chapel Ranch, a serene 1,600-acre haven in central Texas owned by him and Laura Bush. This tranquil escape, a no-fly zone, features a modest limestone home, sprawling oaks, and a shimmering lake. Here, the former president finds solace fishing, painting, and driving freely on the property's roads. His choice of vehicle aligns perfectly with his Texan roots, a Ford F-150 King Ranch, he has owned several Ford F-150 pickup trucks over the years. This robust and iconic truck reflects the essence of Texas, mirroring the rugged spirit of the state and its people. Bush's preference for the F-150 King Ranch combines practicality with a touch of Southern flair, making it a fitting choice for his lifestyle in the rugged terrain state. The Ford F-150 King Ranch, with its blend of strength and style, complements the image of a president who continues to embrace his Texan identity with pride.
In a unique 2017 auction at Barrett Jackson, his 2009 King Ranch Super Crew went under the hammer, raising a whopping $300,000 for charity. However, the President Bush's current F-150 bears the marks of hard work on the ranch, scuffs and scratches, telling the tale of a truck that doesn't just look tough but lives up to its image. Sadly, since 1993, President Bush hasn't hit the public roads. That means every truck he owns is a true workhorse, taming the vast Texas landscape on the family's extensive property. Number 3. Bill Clinton Bill Clinton, the 42nd president, was famous for his excellent vehicle collection. However, the irony is that while being surrounded by these automotive masterpieces, he couldn't drive any of them during his reign. The Ford Mustang Convertible, a present from his stepfather to his younger brother, was the car he missed the most. When Clinton went to the White House, he regretted leaving it behind. Another notable vehicle in his collection is the Chevrolet El Camino, which was once owned by Clinton himself. Clinton also enjoyed specially constructed automobiles such as the Cadillac Fleetwood Presidential Series Limo, despite not being permitted to drive these personal cars during his administration. He didn't own this car, but he was frequently transported in it during official functions. The U.S. government owns one of these limos, emphasizing the particular constraints and benefits of presidential travel. Bill Clinton was also frequently seen touring in the Marine One, which was flown by the HMX-1 Nighthawks. The Sikorsky Sea King and Black Hawk helicopters have a distinctive high-gloss green and white paint scheme. Both are part of the presidential fleet, traveling with the president both locally and overseas. When in flight, Marine One is seldom alone. It is frequently accompanied by a swarm of identical helicopters that serve as decoys to deceive potential threats on the ground. To disguise the president's whereabouts, the helicopters frequently change formation. Each Marine One is outfitted with cutting-edge security and technology to ensure the president's safety. Marine One is more than just a form of transportation. It is a strategic decision. Marine One is regularly utilized for local travel as an alternative to pricey and logistically difficult motorcades. It transports the president from the White House South Lawn to Andrews Air Force Base, where Air Force One awaits. The helicopter is also the favored form of transportation for visits to Camp David, the presidential retreat in Western Maryland. While Air Force One can go longer distances, Marine One is best suited for transporting the president within specified zones, such as examining disaster aftermaths. An armed Marine guard in a sharp Marine blue dress uniform greets every Marine One landing, ensuring the president's safe arrival. Marine One is not only a fast and secure mode of transportation, but it also signifies the president's power and protection. President Bill Clinton inaugurated the Clinton Global Initiative in 2005 as a part of the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation, which began its operations in 1997. The purpose was to carry out critical humanitarian activities around the world. It brings together leaders from business, government, and non-profit organizations to address global concerns with creative solutions. These efforts include annual gatherings of powerful persons, such as presidents of state, Nobel Prize laureates, CEOs, philanthropists, and others. Many promises have been made by the community, positively touching the lives of millions of people in 180 nations. President Clinton's commitment to these efforts necessitates substantial worldwide travel, reflecting the Foundation's commitment to solving serious issues on a global scale. But how does he currently traverse the world? Bill Clinton required a large jet in 1995 as he prepared for a charity trip to Latin America. Frank Justra, a Canadian mining billionaire and Hollywood studio owner, volunteered his expensive passenger jet for the expedition on the condition that he travel with him. They had no idea that this was the start of a meaningful and mutually beneficial friendship. Justra gave to the Clinton Foundation throughout time, becoming one of its top individual donors. Clinton, in turn, acquired regular use of Justra's plane, flying 26 times since then, including 13 trips together. This arrangement was kept secret until recently. Concerns about potential connections between the Clinton Foundation and affluent donors arose during Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. 
Justra, on the other hand, stressed that their friendship was founded purely on altruistic objectives. Their adventures together, made possible by Justra's jet, became a great bonding experience. The pair built a deep bond during their four-day Latin American excursion, nine-day African vacation, and three-day Colombian journey. While Clinton and Justra explored their mutual love of philanthropy, Giustra grew his economic empire in the countries they visited. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Here's an image of ex-president Donald Trump spotted on a yacht with an unidentified model. Donald Trump is no stranger to controversy. With a history of alleged affairs, three marriages, and at least 18 women accusing him of various allegations of inappropriate behavior. Having the luxury to travel in private jets in total secrecy, he certainly had the power to invite whoever he liked on board for whatever reasons. His personality, unlimited resources, and private jets certainly make a recipe for some grand parties. What more do you believe goes on private lets and yachts of these high-ranking officials that we don't yet know of? Let us know in the comments below. Number 2. Jimmy Carter Jimmy Carter, the 39th President of the United States, is remembered for his charisma, sincerity, and humility. During his presidency, Carter used the famous 1972 Lincoln Continental and Air Force One for transportation. The Lincoln Continental, a car that attracted a lot of attention, stood out as a masterpiece, offering a unique blend of history and automotive ingenuity. This Ford Custom Convertible, which was originally a hardtop, underwent extensive modifications in preparation for its role in President Jimmy Carter's inaugural parade. The addition of a convertible top demonstrated the vehicle's adaptability. Its proud owner, Marissa Gustafson, inherited this symbol of exclusivity from her father, a top Lincoln Mercury dealer. The Continental exemplifies luxury, distinction, and a rare intersection of American history and automotive innovation, with only three of these rare Fords known to exist. This may appear extravagant, but it was only to ensure his safety. However, due to the former President's Act, the former President has not been able to drive since the mid-1970s. Carter wasn't much of an auto enthusiast, but he does belong on our list because of his first automobile, a 1947 Studebaker. President Carter cherished the Studebaker Commander, a poignant symbol of his enduring love with Mrs. Carter. This vintage car held special significance as it was the first vehicle they acquired together, marking the beginning of their shared journey. The Studebaker Commander not only represented their early years, but also stood as a testament to the simplicity and shared moments that defined their lasting union. It wasn't merely a car, it was a tangible embodiment of the bond between the former president and his wife, encapsulating the memories of a lifetime spent together. In his post-presidential era, Carter, owing to his advanced age, rarely traveled for vacations, but was very involved in running the Carter Center. For his non-governmental organization, he actively travels, demonstrating a hands-on commitment to positive change. A video of him on a Delta flight from Atlanta to Los Angeles last summer resurfaced, revealing that the president prefers coach class to the extravagance of first class. Carter greeted passengers as he walked down the aisle, shaking hands and posing for selfies. Carter's mode of transportation is a stark contrast to the private jet lifestyle embraced by modern presidents, including Trump. Even at his advanced age, he is committed to living a simple life, which is reflected in his decision to live in his modest two-bedroom ranch home in Plains, Georgia. He emphasizes that his post-presidential ambition was not to amass wealth, but to simply return home. Carter is the only modern-era president to have made such a decision. Carter's commitment to staying active and teaching Sunday school at the Maranatha Baptist Church reflects his enduring connection to his community. As he has an active life, he does travel often. To assist him in his travels, he recently got a surprise gift, too. In a heartwarming celebration of love, former President Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind marked their 75th wedding anniversary. Country stars... Trisha Yearwood and Garth Brooks orchestrated the surprise along with longtime friend Jill Stuckey. The special gift unveiled was a beautifully restored 1964 Ford Super Deluxe convertible matching the year of the Carter's wedding. The red convertible, skillfully restored by Bennett Automotive Specialists, 
gleamed with a red exterior, beige interior, and a soft beige top. Kept under wraps until the celebration, the Carters received the car with evident joy, bright eyes and big smiles reflecting their excitement. The sentimental significance of the car, produced in the same year as their wedding, added an extra layer of charm to the heartfelt gesture. However, Jimmy Carter's travel philosophy is based on simplicity and environmental sensitivity. He enjoys trains, particularly Amtrak, and considers them to be environmentally friendly modes of transportation. Private jets? No way. He chooses smaller aircraft to minimize his environmental impact. Carter doesn't go for flashy rides when he hits the road. You'll see him driving modest cars like Chevrolets or Fords and interacting with regular people along the way. Carter's focus remains on humanitarian efforts even when he travels internationally. Hence, he prefers modest accommodations over lavish retreats. There's no doubt that Carter's focus is entirely on living with simplicity and making the world a better place. Number one, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States, was known for his charisma and inspiring oratory. However, he faced threats due to Cold War tensions, his stance on civil rights, and opposition to powerful interest groups. Hence, Kennedy's security included the Secret Service, which provided close protection. Despite precautions, the open nature of public events made him vulnerable, leading to the ultimate tragic event. Let's first take a look at President Kennedy's impressive car collection. These are the stylish rides that graced the White House during his presidency. The first car is a Ford Thunderbird convertible. The inaugural vehicle of the T-Bird's third generation was a Corinthian white beauty. It wasn't just the power that drew people in. Innovative features like a floating rearview mirror and a swing-away steering wheel added to the allure. The T-Bird stole the show at Kennedy's inauguration parade, which was fitting for a president obsessed with luxury. Fifty of these birds paraded, possibly aided by the role of Ford executive Robert McNamara in Kennedy's administration. The T-Bird was more than just a car. It was a symbol of sophistication. Fast forward and we come across another T-Bird, this time a hardtop in sandshell beige metallic. This 63 model marked the end of the third generation, with notable upgrades such as an AM-FM radio, power door locks, and a remote-controlled driver's side mirror. Even the Principality of Monaco received a limited edition Landau. Now consider a pivotal day in history. The convertible that forever links Kennedy and automobiles is the 1961 Lincoln Continental. The president rode in the Kennedy Continental car, also known as the X-100, on the tragic day of his assassination. For presidential duty, this stock convertible was modified with steps for Secret Service agents, flashing lights, and a siren. Following that tragic day, the X-100 underwent another transformation. For safety, titanium plating was used to reinforce doors and body panels, and filters were added to the cooling and heating systems. The deep blue convertible had turned black. It served in subsequent administrations until 1977, when it retired and found a permanent home at the Henry Ford Museum. A Sultana White Lincoln Continental Convertible, the last car Kennedy rode in before his untimely death, was among the other notable rides in Kennedy's collection. In the year 2013, this piece of history was auctioned off in Boston. Each vehicle in Kennedy's car collection tells a story of an era, a presidency, and a man who left an indelible mark on American history. These cars, with their elegance and significance, bear witness to John Kennedy's enduring legacy. President Kennedy also enjoyed sailing and was frequently seen navigating the open sea. He often took a break at Hammersmith Farm in Newport, where he could enjoy the waves. He had a particular fondness for the sea, and Jacqueline Kennedy stated that being on a boat was his ultimate form of relaxation. There were no phones, just the sun, the water, and the soothing waves. The president can be seen in the photos sitting on the U.S. Coast Guard boat Manitou in Narragansett Bay. He appeared to be at ease, enjoying the sea breeze. But that wasn't the only time President John Kennedy visited Newport. He returned in September of 1962 to watch the America's Cup. John Kerry, who went on to become a prominent figure, was also present. 
joining President Kennedy to watch the thrilling race off the coast of Newport, Rhode Island. It was a memorable occasion, with the President reveling in the sea and the thrill of sailing. Now, you might be wondering how he used to fly around. It was, after all, Air Force One. However, this special plane that transports the President of the United States wherever he or she needs to go is more than a plane. It's the name given to any Air Force plane transporting the President. But when we say Air Force One, we usually mean one of two customized Boeing 747 planes. These planes are truly unique. Air Force One is like the President's flying symbol. It's easily identified by the words United States of America, the American flag, and the President's seal. Because it can refuel while flying, Air Force One can travel anywhere. It's similar to a mobile command center with highly secure electronics. Air Force One has been in service since 1944 when it was operated by the Presidential Airlift Group. However, in 1962, President John Kennedy was the first to fly in a jet designed specifically for him, a specially modified Boeing 707. This new jet transported President John F. Kennedy to a divided Berlin, where he issued his famous Declaration of Independence. This was also the plane that flew the assassinated president back to Washington from Dallas. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.